Hi everyone. I've received some more questions about the DMC 3XL, so I thought I'd make some more follow-up videos to address some of them. In this video, I'll be talking about just the basic setup on what you need to do for all your devices so you can use this MIDI controller. I'll be speaking from the even time perspective, as since I have the two pedals here, the pitch factor and the space. And I'll be showing you how to set up the separate pedals individually so it can communicate with the MIDI controller properly. Now, before you do anything, you got to answer some questions for yourself. You got to determine the order of your pedals in terms of which one's going to be device A and B. As you can see in the DMC3, you have up to four different devices it can control, and you gotta determine which ones will be which. For me, I have my pitch factor set to device A, and my space is device B. Next, you'll have to decide the routing. Basically, where you're gonna put the MIDI cables and how you're gonna connect them. I decided based off uh, proximity, where the pedals were located, but also for functionality, I have the DMC first going into the eventide space and then back out through the pitch factor. I do this because I have the DMC communicating to the pitch factor, but I also use the tap tempo on my eventide space to connect to the tap tempo on the pitch factor. So these two both talk to this one, so that's why I have them route through the space first and then through the even tied second. So once you've decided the order of your layout, then you can go in and start setting up the menus. So let me first set up the menus on the even tied pedals first. And so let me start with pitch factor. First you get into the setup menu. Uh, I'm already in the MIDI menu, so you go to the MIDI menu. You know, you turn the little encoder button to the MIDI, click on MIDI, and then the beginning uh, the first one is the receive channel. If this device is A, it's going to need to be channel 1. So you turn it to make sure it's channel 1. So that's correct. Oh. The next uh, transmit channel. That's if important if you, this device is going to go into another one. Uh, but since this is the last one that the MIDI is transmitted to, then I don't need to mess with that. Receive control. This is the next important one. This is where the DMC will be controlling specific uh, buttons and functions. So go into this menu, and there's mainly three you need to adjust. The tap tempo, if you're wanting to use the DMC for tap tempo. The active and the pedal ones. So let me just find them real quick. Tap, and the manual says to go to C42. The change it, you just, uh, oh, wrong one. To change it, you push the right button, and the arrow points to it, and then you can change the value. Oh. Let me go. Next one is you know, active, so find active, and that's supposed to be C42. And then pedal. Pedal somewhere. Pedal C48. Now, if this was the H9, the hot switch or space, even time space here, there's a hot switch one. But for now, these are the ones that I'll be using. Once those are all set, you can go ahead and exit. Then let's see if there's anything else important. Transmit CCs. No, this is the last of my change, so that's not important. Receive map. This one's important in terms of your patches laying out. What you want is to have a zero lined up with one, one, one lined up with one, two, and so forth. Two, two, one. If you messed around with the, this menu before, it should be fine if you haven't touched it, but if you messed around with it in a with another setting, uh, you'll have to come back and fix that. Receive map, transmit map, that's not necessary since it's the last of my, in my chain. Control, transmit, that one is just turning on and off if you're transmitting controls or programming. So I think that's about it that we need. Oh, clock in. Since I'm running the tap tempo for my space into the even time, I gotta make sure that clock in is turned on. Clock out, not necessarily, and then that's good to go. And let me turn that off. So the MIDI's function is set. Let's do the same thing for the space. Turn it on. Let's find the MIDI menu. 
receive channel since this is my B device this is going to be set to channel 2 transmit channel this is important since I am transmitting some information from the space independently from the DMC I do have to transmit and I transmit to channel 1 because I'm speaking front to the pitch factor this is channel 1 this one's channel 2 so that's important to be able to talk to the pitch factor receive control just like we do with the pitch factor this is very important to be able to change or for the DMC to be able to communicate to it so through this one you go through all the different ones that it says in the manual you know active 42 uh, what else pedal C48 did I miss hot switch and I think that's about it oh there's hot switch uh, hot switch since I'm not using DMC to talk to the space in this value I leave it blank but if you wanted to talk to it you'll definitely need to get that set to CC by pushing right arrow and then you change the value but since I'm not using it I'll just leave it like that good what else we got transmit CC's that's important for transmitting certain values to be able to talk to the pitch factor I'm not currently doing anything right now receive map just like we did with the pitch factor you got to make sure everything is in order zero is preset one one is two two is three I know it's sort of out of order but it always starts with the zero make sure that's set transmit map I'm not using it to transmit any uh, mini maps so I'm, I'll skip that part control transmit on because I am transmitting a uh, MIDI clock to the pitch factor. So uh, that actually, I don't know if this is nest this needs to be on, but I just have it on just in case. Program transmit on just in case. Output. I have currently merge. This is merges the MIDI commands from the DMC with the space. Now it might work with through C, but I just set it to merge and it did what I wanted to do. So I'm just going to leave it at that for now because it's doing what I want. MIDI clock in. I have it off currently, but if I wanted the DMC to talk to it, I would be turning it back on. For me, though, the main thing is MIDI clock out. I have that on because that's what's talking to the pitch factor. And I don't have to actually assign any any uh, actual specific pedals. If this is accepting MIDI clock in, and this is you know, sending MIDI clock, then all I have to do is push the tap tempo button, and it'll automatically sync everything together. So I don't need to specifically assign tap to control like the tap tempo and the pitch factor. It's automatic if the clock is working. So I have my both even tied devices working. Now let's direct our attention to the DMC 3XL and get this set up. So to get in the setup mode, you have to turn it off, turn it back on, and while the screen is scrolling, you hold down the front two buttons. And it'll say you know, what update it is. I haven't updated to the latest one. I'm still on like uh, version 1.01. But it's not too different right now. So now we're in the setup menu, and there's a lot of different options with the setup menu. I'm not going to go through all of them because I don't use all of them. But right now we're in preset mode. If you click on it in the middle button, you can adjust how many uh, presets you can access. Right now I, I'm just using 30. Uh, if I need more than that, then I'll change it. But that's all I need for now. Next is scrolling mode. Click on that, and this uh, sets devices that you'll want to access for scrolling. Since this is device A and B, I have scrolling mode for A and B good to go. Next, this is very important. This is setting your devices. If your devices aren't talking to each other, you might need to check this menu. Device A, click on it. See how it says even tie? You gotta go in and select your brand of device. 
So if you go up, there's like line six or other things. You got to read sort of the manual to show you if you can't understand what it's saying to sort of translate what the word is. So I'll take it back to eventide since they're both. So I'll leave it on that. That's where it's supposed to be. Good. Then I go to device B. Same thing. Make sure it's on eventide. It is. Exit out of that. Next one, device C. I'm not using device C, so I leave it uh, Leave it alone. No device D. I'm not using any uh, pedals that have a loop function right now, so I'll skip that. This changes the loop remote stop configuration. I'm, it doesn't apply. I'm not currently using an expression pedal for the jack, but if you wanted to <coughs> uh, mess around with how your expression pedal interfaces, that's the menu you go to. Next is the expression pedal input channel selection. So that sets uh, what devices the expression pedal would be talking to. Next jack, multi-jack. It's this red jack in the back, I believe. And it has a lot of different options. And you'll be able to set how you want to use it in this menu. Next, you'll be able to set the channel that it selects. Roller, if you have a roller, this sets your roller function. Uh, this sets the channel for the roller. If you have a four button version, this sets what your fourth button is and what the channel, what channel that the fourth button communicates on. Uh, expression pedal display, this changes how the display, display works. Uh, clock, this is the menu to be able to adjust how mini clock is communicated and being able to use this as a tap tempo. TPOL, that's tap tempo out configuration. It's only, it, uh, this is what sets your multi jack out. Next is TDP, tap and clock decimal point configuration. You can set it in increments of 0.5 or 1 beats per minute increments. This sets the display brightness if you want it brighter or less bright. And this is sets the input channel receive channels. You can this thing can receive MIDI channels as well. Here we go. And then we have the CC channel for CC mode. I'm going to have a separate video talking about CC mode come out later. And that sets the control values for the left button, control channel for the right button, control value for the right button, and this is factory reset. And then that's all the modes. So with the Eventide devices, as you can see, most of the setup is done with the separate devices. And then you just got to set the, the brand on your device A and B and set which devices are set for scrolling and preset mode. And that's pretty much it. And the rest of it is pretty much plug and play. I'm going to have another video coming out talking about the CC mode option. This is one where it takes a little bit more programming as well, but it's really not that hard. I hope this was helpful. If you've had problems with these devices not communicating well, the source of the problem can probably be tracked back to the original setup of the devices. So hopefully this clarified how to do it properly so you can be well on your way to use these tools for your benefit. So I hope this was helpful. Leave a comment if you have any questions. Hope this video was helpful. Stay tuned for more. Thank you.